Math 3, Unit 2, Section 7. Today we're going to be talking about solutions of functions. Remember that solutions are when two graphs intersect or any point that is on a graph. If you do not have these things right now, I suggest having at least a couple colored highlighters and maybe a couple or a few um, different colored pens. It will help you as we go through this lesson. Okay. So the first one, it tells us that the graph of y equals f of x is shown below. And so right here, this is f of x, okay? And when I start doing these problems, I normally always will like highlight the graphs. If there's multiple graphs, I'll highlight them in different colors. This one, there's only one graph on this. And so I would still highlight it because it makes you see things better. Otherwise, sometimes the lines and your um, X and Y axis kind of get blurred together when you're going through this. So this first one says list and label all the points that are solutions for F of X equals zero. Okay, so you really have to think sometimes about these and you're thinking about what does this actually mean? And so if we were graphing this, um, we would say this would be Y equals zero. And so if you're looking here, you're trying to look what are values that are where y equals zero. And um, so here's your y-axis. So this is where values are moving and then not going on the y-axis because the y value is zero. And so the points that are where f of x equals zero or y equals zero are a and e. And so for a lot of these problems, you're just listing the letters that answer this question, okay? The next one says, list all of the label points that are solutions for y equals f of x. So here, y equals f of x, all they're trying to do are, is what are the solutions for f of x? What are the answers for this function? And so the answers for this function are all the letters that are on this function here. And so we would write down A, B, C, D, E. And I might make a note here to saying all solutions on the, oops, the graph for f of x. C says list all the label points that are solutions for x equals zero. So x equals zero means you have a value for y and not for x. So it'd be where it's not moving anywhere on the x-axis and it is moving somewhere on the y-axis. And so the only point here that's where x equals zero and it's just on the y-axis is there at d. So point d would be like it's zero for x and then it goes down this far on the y. So d is the only solution. Okay, so moving on here, um, it tells us here the graph of y equals f of x and y equals g of x is shown in the graph below. First of all, one problem is that this isn't labeled. We don't know which one is g of x and which one is f of x. So let's go ahead and make that decision. And normally, this should be labeled on all problems. If it isn't labeled, then you're going to have to label it yourself and answers will be different based on how you label, but I feel like on your homework, everything's correct. It's just that on my notes here, I forgot to label them. So this straight line right here is g of x, and I'm gonna go ahead and highlight g of x so we can really see what's happening there. We can see it's a linear function, all right? And then we have f of x, and I'm gonna go ahead and highlight f of x, and here it is, and this is a quadratic function. Hopefully you notice that. Okay, so first question that we have here for A, oops, no, we don't actually need that now, is um, list and label all points that are solutions for f of x equals zero. Because there are two functions on this, this means that we are only looking at the f of x function, and notice how I highlighted this in pink, and my f of x function is also in pink. And when it says f of x equals zero, we know that it means y equals zero on my f of x function. And so based on what we learned on the last one, it's where it's not going on up at all, it's just staying on the x-axis. And so the values that are just on the 
x-axis that are for the f of x function are a and d. So these points are on our x-axis. That's where y is 0 for my f of x function. b. List all the label points that are solutions for g of x equals f of x. So this means where do those two graphs intersect? And so the points that g of x and f of x intersect are right here. We have one here at b, because you can see the two functions intersect there, and then also at e. So they only cross there at b and e. And we can make a note here, graphs intersect. Okay, C asks, list all the label points that are solutions for x equals 0 on f of x. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this in pink because it's dealing with my f of x, which is my pink function. x equals 0 on the graph of f of x. And so where does x equal 0? So it's not going anywhere on the x-axis and then going on the y-axis. So if you look here, the only point that is on f of x where x is 0 and y has a value is the point C. D states list all the label points that are solutions for y equals f of x. Okay, so solutions for y equals f of x. Remember that is every single point on the f of x graph. Again, I highlighted this in yellow, be, or sorry, not yellow, that's pink. Highlighted this in pink because I already had highlighted that in pink. So we just want all the solutions there for that graph and all those solutions are A, B, C, D, E. All right, and then it says on E, list all the label points that are solutions for y equals g of x. So again, that's all points on our g of x graph. And so if we go up here and look at g of x, that's highlighted here. One solution is B, and then we have F, H, and E. And we can go ahead and write here all solutions on G of X. And then this one was all solutions on f of x. Okay, you'll notice g isn't on either of the functions. It's just there, you know, it's a point on the graph, but it was never a question that anyone asked that we needed to answer. And so sometimes some of the letters don't actually fit into any of the questions, and that's okay. All right, so we're going to go ahead and move on now. So the next one here, this one is labeled very nicely for us. And so I'm gonna go ahead and highlight G of X in my yellow highlighter. And then we're gonna highlight F of X in our pink. Okay. All right, so the first question says, how many solutions are there for g of x equals 0. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this question because we're dealing with our yellow graph right now, g of x equals 0. We know that when it says g of x equals 0, that really means y equals 0 on that function. And so basically, it is our points on the x-axis. Okay, And so if you look here, there is a point right here. So that's one solution. There's a point right here, so that makes two there's a point right here, so that's three, and there's a point right here, so that's four. So there are four solutions on g of x for g of x equals zero. Okay, so there we go. Next question, how many solutions are there for f of x equals g of x? Okay, so remember f of x equals g of x, that is where the graphs intersect. So looking through here, we need to see how many times do the graphs intersect. And if we look right here, we can see that the two graphs intersect one place there and then one point there. So that means that there are two solutions. Okay, next equation says f of 2.8 equals what? And so what this is meaning is you're going to be looking 
for the answer, okay? The answer is always the y value, okay? So I'm gonna write here, um, the answer is the y value of f of x at x equals 2.8. So I'm giving you all this information so that you can kind of see things better. So if you're looking at this f of x equation, okay, um, if x is at 2.8, so we're, that means that the x value would be in between 2 and 3, what is the y value? Well, the y value, if you look, no matter where you are between 2 and 3, is at negative 3. So this answer is negative 3. In fact, f of any number that we would put here would always give us an answer of 3, because this, or sorry, of negative 3, because this line right here is at negative 3. The answer, that question, like if we were to write the equation, it would be y equals negative 3. So any value in x will always give us a y value at negative 3. Okay, D asks us, how many times does g of x equal 4.5? So I'm gonna highlight this in yellow, and actually I should have highlighted this one in pink because we were talking about our f equation. How many times does g of x equal 4.5? Okay, so notice on this one they're giving this value. This value over here is your y value, the value in here is your would be your x value. So just like here, we found the x. The x is what they told us, and we are looking for the y at that point on that graph. So on this one, we're trying to figure out what is, how many times does g of x equal 4.5 on the y, okay? And so let's write this out in words first. So what this is saying is on the g of x graph, the y value of 4.5, so on the g of x equation, when it, how many times is the y value 4.5? So if we look up here, so we're looking when is y 4.5? So y is 4.5 over here and 4.5 over here. That's where the y value is. And so they're not asking like what the x values are, they're just asking how many times is y 4.5 on that g of x equation. And so that answer there would be two. Okay, next, on what interval is g of x less than negative six? So again, that's mean, meaning that on the g of x graph, what interval is where the y value is less than negative six. So if we look at the g of x equation, when is the y value less than negative six? And uh, I'm gonna kinda get out a different color here, but see here, here is negative six. If I were to kinda bring my card out here, you can see that the y value is less than negative six from like here to here, okay? And so, if you're looking, the interval, when we're, when we're doing intervals, we're always like talking about our domain. So it's always going up and saying the interval is from this value to this value. So this is approximate. And so I'm just gonna do approximate. This little squiggly line means approximately equal to the interval. And we're gonna do in parentheses because it's not exact, about five to six. So again, if you're looking up here, see how it goes below negative six, somewhere around five and then stops somewhere around six. That's when it, the y value is below negative six. Oops, and you couldn't see what I was writing down there, so let's pull this up here, so sorry. I maybe need to make this smaller. So again, on what interval is g of x less than negative six? g of x equation, where the y value is less than negative six, our g of x equation is our yellow highlighted equation. And again, as we're looking at the graph, it's in between five and six. Okay, the last question says, how many roots does g of x have? 
okay, when they are talking about roots, um, what they are talking about is when does x equal 0? When does the graph cross the x-axis? Okay, so I'm going to make this smaller here. It's going to help me too much. Okay, so looking at the graph of g of x, so again, I highlighted it because we're talking about g of x. How many times does it cross the x-axis? So if we look here, 1, 2, 3, 4. So the answer is 4. g of x crosses the x-axis 4 times. That's also talking about the roots. Those would be solutions to that graph. Um, another thing I want you to write down here, too, real quick, is like when you're talking about these functions, like if I have g of x equals, you know, some number, just remember that this right here, the number, and this could be g of x or f of x, the x, if you have a number there, it's talking about the x value. And after the equal sign, whatever number is over here, that is talking about the y value. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move on now to the next page. Hopefully um, you got all that. I'm sorry, I didn't realize that it wasn't showing at a certain point. <clears throat> okay, so this last part um, is telling us the table below shows several points on three continuous functions. We have f of x. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and circle f of x in pink. I'm going to use pink for f of x. We have g of x, which I am going to put in blue. So g of x is blue here. And then we have h of x, which I'm going to put in green. Okay, so right here, just so you understand, this means that on the f of x graph, the x value is 0, the y value is negative 2. So if you were plotting f of x on here, you could go 0 on the x, negative 2 on the y, and there would be a point there for f of x. Okay. This next point right here is meaning that the x value is 1 and the y value is 0. So 1, 0, that point would be there. Okay. The next one... Um, this point would be 2, negative 1. So again, notice I'm getting all of these values from for my f of x function. It gives me my x, that's the y on x of f of x. So these are all ordered pairs. So 2, negative 1 is 2 and then negative 1. And uh, the next point here, this is 3, negative 4. So we'd go 3, negative 1, 2, 3, 4. And then this last one is at 4, negative 2, which is right here. And so we could draw this function, and it looks like that for right now. And so that pink one is f of x. The same thing works for g of x. So we could do those in blue. Um, I'm not going to actually graph it because I think that using this graph, it's really hard to see what's going on. We're going to use a different type of graph to answer our are to answer these questions, but the g of x, same thing. So 0 and on the g of x graph, graph 0, 4 would be that point. Um, and so if you wanted to, and you can go back and do this, if it makes more sense to you, that is fine. You would plot all the points for g of x and draw that function, and then the same thing you could do for h of x. Okay, so the next question here, though, if we start here on a, so right, basically we have three different types of functions right here that would be drawn that could be drawn on the graph, okay? And they're gonna ask us just to look at different, two different ones at a time. And so this says, on the number line below, shade the intervals between the integers where the solutions of f of x equals g of x, okay? And so we know solutions are when the graphs intersect, okay? So what happens is, what I would like us to do is that we start and we're gonna use our two colors here. So I'm gonna use pink for f of x, and g of x is gonna be blue. So over here, I'm just gonna write f of x equals you know, my pink color, and g of x is going to equal my blue color. Let me move this up here a little bit. 
maybe even make it a little bigger. Let me sign it. Okay, so f of x. So the first f of x is at negative two. So we're just gonna pretend like, you know, basically it's like we're taking, this is the x-axis right here, and I have it written here just bigger, okay? And so when it says when x is zero, so when x is zero, the y value is negative two. So f of x would be down here. We're just kind of approximating. We know negative two is below the x-axis. Okay, and on g of x, it's at four. Four is above the x-axis. So we're just gonna make those points for right now, okay? Now, on the next one, at one, f of x is zero. So at one here, f of x is zero. Okay, so if I were drawing this, I'm just gonna draw these as straight lines right now. f of x goes from here to here, okay? g of x at one, g of x at one is also at one. So I'm gonna just put a point here for g of x and we're gonna connect these dots. Okay, now we're gonna go to two. So at two, here's two, f of x is negative one. So at two, negative one would be below the x-axis. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a point below there. Oops, and we're gonna draw that line. And g of x would be at negative two. So if f of x is negative one, and at two, g of x is negative two, negative two is below negative one. So I'm gonna put a point there, and I'm going to go ahead and draw this line. What you should notice right now here is that these two lines are intersecting. At some point between one and two, okay? And so we are going to, because it says highlight, um, shade the interval between the integers where the solutions f of x equals g of x. So I'm just going to highlight this interval right here because somewhere between one and two, these two graphs are going to intersect. So as we continue, at three, so at three here, f of x is negative four. So f of x was at negative one, and now it's at negative four, so it's gonna be lower than where it was. And then g of x is at negative six, which is gonna be even lower, and I didn't kind of mark these very well, but just you basically need to know, is f of x above or below g of x? And right now f of x is still above g of x because negative six is below negative four. And then at four, f of x is at negative two, so it's going up just a little bit because it was at negative four, now it's at negative two. And then g of x, and I can, I guess I can go ahead and connect those. g of x is at one, so one is above here. And so we connect those. And hopefully you see again that my two graphs intersect, which means there's a solution there because whenever the graphs intersect, there's a solution. And so we're gonna go ahead and highlight this interval right there too. All right, so anytime there is an intersection, that's where there is a solution to the two graphs. And so there's an intersection there and there's also an intersection there. And that's all you have to do on that. We're just highlighting what's going on. Okay, so the next one now, it's asking us to compare f of x equals h of x. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and use the same colors in terms of, we're gonna go ahead and say that f of x is pink and we'll do h of x as green. Okay, so again, we're using this chart. F of x we've already drawn, but it's always a good idea to kind of go through and do it each time because now we're comparing it with h of x. So f of x, when it's at zero, and again, this is like our x-axis right here. So we have zero and then we're moving it up and down to make that point zero, it's at negative two. So I'm gonna put that point there for f of x. On h of x at zero, it's at negative one. So that's above f of x. Okay, because negative two would be lower um, and negative one is above that. Okay, so now we go to one. So at one, f of x is zero. So we'll go ahead and make that point and we can draw that line. And h of x is at three. So three is above here. So we're gonna go ahead and make a point there for three and connect those. So, so far there's no intersection, so we won't highlight anything. Okay, next. At two, f of x is negative one, 
And so we're going to go negative 1 below here, and we can connect those. And h of x is at 1, so 1's probably about right there. And we can connect those. Still no intersections, so there's nothing to highlight. Now we go to 3. At 3, f of x is negative 4, so negative 1, 2, 3, 4, something like that. And we can connect those. And h of x is at negative 2, so negative 1, 2 would be about here. Again, they do not intersect. Neither one of these two graphs have intersected, so there's nothing to highlight. And then we go to um, 4. At 4, it's at negative 2, so 1, 2, negative 2. We'll go ahead and draw that line. And h of x is at negative 1, which would be about right here. And again, no intersection. So there is no solution here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and write. It says, if, if it is not necessary that a solution exists, exists, explain why. So no solution. Um, we can put f of x does not equal h of x. Or you could say something like the graphs never intersect. So next one, C. On the number line below, shade the intervals between the integers where the solutions g of x, so g of x is our blue, equals h of x, which is our green. Must exist. Same thing. Okay, so again, we're using our chart. Okay, over here, I'm going to go ahead and mark g of x equals my blue dot, and h of x equals my green dot. So at 0, g of x is 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. We're going to put a point there h of x is negative 1, so we'll put a point there. Okay, at 1, g of x is at 1, so g of x is at 1, and h of x is at 3, so 1, 2, 3. Okay, we'll go ahead and connect our green lines and our blue lines, and hopefully you notice that there's an intersecting point. When there's an intersecting point, we go ahead and highlight because that means there is a solution. The graphs intersect at some point there. Okay, at 2, g of x is negative 2, so we're going to go negative 1, 2. And we can go ahead and connect our g of x. And then h of x is at 1, so we go up 1, connect those two lines, and we can see there they did not intersect. The two lines here did not touch each other, okay? So we don't highlight anything. At 3, um, g of x is at negative 6, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, something like that. And connect that. And then h of x is at negative 2, so negative 1, 2. And go ahead and connect those. And again, we can see that they are not intersecting, so nothing to highlight. At 4, g of x is at 1, so we're going to move that in, or up 1 and draw that line. And h of x is at negative 1, which is about right there. And we draw that line. And then hopefully, again, you see that the two lines intersected. So we're going to highlight that solution. So that means there is a solution between 3 and 4 where g of x and h of x intersect. OK. D. It says, on the number line below, shade the intervals between the lines where the solutions to f of x equals negative 3, and g of x equals negative 3 must exist. Okay, so this is a little different. This is basically trying to see, will f of x ever equal negative 3? Um, and then will g of x ever equal negative 3? And if they do, where is it? Okay, and so we're going to start by looking at our f of x equation. And so f of x, we're going to do in pink, and I'm going to just do this one a little different in terms of I'm just going to write um, what the value is for f of x above here. So it's like my ordered pair. Um, you guys have your chart here at the top, but because I want you to see what I'm doing, you'll have to be looking at your chart. I'm not going to have it on the screen. Okay. Um, you know what, though? Maybe I could just cut it out here real quick. Hold on. I'm going to cut out the chart so that we can see it at the same time. This will be easier. OK. So here we are. Just going to kind of put this chart 
right here. I cut it from the top. Um, so we can look at what's going on. Actually, I'm going to cut this a little better. Sorry. All right. So at 0, f of x is at negative 2. We're just going to write down all of our values. So at 0, f of x is at negative 2. At 1, f of x is at 0. At 2, f of x is at negative 1. At 3, f of x is at negative 4. And at 4, f of x is at negative 2. Okay, so right now we're just looking at f of x. And I'm just going to have us go through and write yes, no, yes, no kind of things. So what I mean by that is if you're on a number line and you're at negative 2 and you go to 0, will there be um, a ne is there a negative 3 anywhere between negative 2 and 0? So you know how a number line goes. This would be negative 2 and then negative 1 and 0. Um, there's no negative 3 in there. So I'm going to say no, there is no negative 3. And we're talking about negative 3 because they asked us when does f of x equal negative 3. Okay, then you are at zero and you go to negative one. Are there any negative threes in there? Again, the answer is no. Okay, from negative one to negative four. So if you're going on a number line and you're at negative one, you go negative one, and then it goes negative two, negative three, negative four. So there is a negative three in between negative one and negative four. So that's yes. And then negative four to negative two, if you're at negative four, and then it would be negative three and negative two, there is a negative three in between negative four and negative two. So f of x has a value of negative 3 in between negative 1 and 4 and also between negative 4 and negative 2. Okay, so now we have to look at our g of x. So we've been doing g of x in green. Again, we're looking for when does g of x equal negative 3. And so looking at our chart here, I have g of x. We're going to make these, you know, g of x. Okay, so g of x at 0 is 4. g of x at... 1 is 1, g of x at 2 is at negative 2, g of x at 3 is at negative 6, and g of x at 4 is at 1. Okay, so between 4 and 1, so if we're going from 4 to 1, this is 4, 4, and then 3, and then 2, and then 1. There's no negative 3, so we're putting no. From 1 to negative 2, it would go 1. And if you're going to negative 2, it would be 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2. So no negative 3 in there. From negative 2 to negative 6, though, there is a negative 3. Because this would go negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. So there was a negative 3. So we're going to put yes there. And then from negative 6 to 1, this again is going down. So it would be negative 6 to negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, all the way up to 1. And so even as you heard me talking, there was a negative 3 in there. So this is a yes. It won't always happen this way, but since both of them cross at negative 3 um, at the same points here, that means that there are solutions between 2 and 3 and 3 and 4 where both f of x and g of x equal negative 3. If, let's say, this one was a no and this one was a yes, then we wouldn't highlight it. You only highlight where both of them have that value. Okay. Okay. Last one here, again, we're going to use the same chart. I'm just going to kind of bring it down here. This one is only asking for um, to shade the intervals between the integers where h of x, sorry, h of x equals 0. h of x we've been using green. And so we're only putting h of x on this graph. And so we can go ahead and just write this out again. So h of x, we're using the color green. At 0, h of x is negative 1. At 1, h of x is 3. At 2, h of x is 1. At 3, h of x is negative 2. And at 4, h of x is negative 1. And so <clears throat> I'd normally give you time to kind of try this on your own, but we're just going to kind of do this together. Is there a value of 0 between negative, three, negative 1 and 3? The answer there should be yes. Is there a value of 0 between 3 and going to 1? And that is no because this would go 3, 2, 1. From 1 to 2, is there a value of 0? That answer is yes, because here, in going from 1 to negative 2, you'd go 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2. And then from negative 2 to negative 1, there is no 0. Okay. And again, I'm choosing 0 because that's what they said. They're like, when will h of x equal 0? 
So we're just highlighting the areas where the answer is yes for h of x equals 0. All right, and that's it.